So on some level, you know, your goal, as, as much fun as this all is, at the end of the day, to get the points on every MP checkpoint, you have to pass the tests. And to do that, you have to run the tests. And there's a particular style of uh, development here that's sometimes known as test-driven development. I'm kind of going to show you how to do that. The goal here is to run the tests often and to do as little work as possible in between running the tests. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's just run the test suite. I just checked this out. And so um, I suspect that nothing is going to work uh, because I haven't made any meaningful changes to this. Um, so there's a couple things you want to notice when you run the test suite. The first is that some of these tests are a little slow. They might take, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds to finish. Um, and that isn't great for being able to iterate. So when you're doing test-driven development, you want to run the test as quickly as possible, okay? So now let's zero in on one test and let's try to get, get a sense of how to approach it. So we're gonna actually go and open up the testing directory here. Um, the tests that we've provided for the MP and that we'll provide for future checkpoints are really designed to be real world examples of tests that we might write for a real project. There's a particular style of writing tests for grading where the tests get like really gnarly and weird and strange and they're testing all sorts of things that you probably wouldn't get wrong and we didn't do that. Okay, so look, it's possible that you'll find some way to do this that passes the test suites that we didn't anticipate. And that's, that's, that's okay. Um, we're, we're cool with that. I wanted to give you a better example of a real test suite, right? That was actually written in a way that you might actually understand um, and that would be useful to you as, as you went. So the, uh, the test suite for this MP is testing, this part of the MP is testing, uh, there are four tests. Um, and two of them are what are called end-to-end -end tests, meaning that they're actually testing your app from the UI all the way down. Two of them are what are called uh, unit tests, meaning they're testing one piece of functionality. So let's look at one of the unit tests first, okay? So one of the things that's broken about your app right now is that it doesn't compare courses to each other properly. And for that reason, when you load it up, the courses are all in a random order. And so one of the things you have to do is fix this. The way you fix this is by implementing the comparator properly in summary. The other reason that you're going to want to read these tests is because sometimes the tests are going to tell you how to do stuff, right? So for example, these set of assertions uh, is designed to test to make sure that your comparator function works properly. Currently they fail because your comparator function only returns zero. The courses that we've created here, these different course summaries, there's some, now one of the things here is that we create a course in a department, the badminton department, um, that you don't even have uh, in the, the data set. So we actually use some data that's outside of the normal data that you're using for the display. Um, we've actually, we, we've tried to push some things based on the, t so it turns out the title might be, need to be used in the course summary. I think, in fact, I said that it wouldn't be, but it, it actually turns out that we're going to test it. So, um, and then, you know, these tests are designed to say, okay, uh, if I compare CS125 and uh, B ad, you know, badminton uh, 10, that badminton 10 comes first, that CS125 is greater than. Uh, if I flip them, then badminton 100 is less than CS125. Um, same thing with these two courses, right? So CS120 VR is greater than, it goes after uh, CS498 CB, that's computational Batman. Um, and then the last one here says, even though we created these with the semester in a year, your comparator should ignore them. Uh, the comparator doesn't actually compare years and semesters. That'd be much more complicated and it's not needed because really we're only gonna be showing one semester at a time. So, um, so you know, now let's actually show you how to run this. Okay, so our goal is gonna to need to work on the comparator function. I'm gonna run this method. Um, you'll notice over here, there's this little arrow and that allows me to run just this method. And you'll see if I run just this method, it is way faster, right? I can run it again and again, and it completes almost immediately. So this is really nice. Um, this is a good starting point. Uh, it also tells me what went wrong. It essentially says on line 90, 99, um, let's see here, that's right here. Um, it said, 
it was expected to be greater than zero, but was zero. And actually, the reason why this is even working at all, even getting to that point, is because I've actually already done a little bit of work in my comparator. Um, let me go get rid of that uh, because this is, so my comparator right now is comparing based on the number. Um, and so let's go ahead and just have it return zero. And you'll see that uh, now if I run this, um, wait for a minute, um, and now you'll see it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail much earlier. It's going to fail on the first comparison where it looks at two different forces. Um, and so this is, and so, you know, one approach to this sort of MP is to say, okay, here's, this is broken. How should I fix it? Go back, adjust your comparator function, rerun this, adjust your comparator function, rerun this. At some point, your comparator function will pass the test, at which point, from our perspective, it's correct. Um, and so, and you can do that, and then you can move on to the filtering method, uh, which, which, you know, looks at and making sure you do filtering properly you and then and then you have to start actually looking at the, some of the other methods that look at more more complicated pieces of, of, of behavior um, so so that's that's your goal um, you know and that's one uh, useful way to make forward progress on the MP is to um, focus on running the tests and iterating based on the test so understanding what the tests are testing you know making sure that you're doing the right thing and then adjusting your uh, your code to uh, to pass the test suites.